Joining me right now is the CEO of Nissan Motors, uh, Renault Nissan, Carlos Ghosn, with us right now. Good to see you, Carlos. Good to see you, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. Before we get into the specifics on your business, because I feel like you're going through the entire industry, a real revolution, uh, if you will. You'll correct me if I'm wrong on that, but how would you characterize the global economy today, given that Nissan and Renault ha have businesses all over the world? I would say uh, uh, growing with moderation, with a lot of discrepancies between the different economies. But, uh, you know, if you look at 2016, there's no doubt on the fact this is going to be a year of growth. But you're going to have a lot of differences between China and the United States from one side, Japan, and some of the emerging markets from the other side. A yeah. lot of discrepancies. Well, we, we've talked before about Chinese automakers. Uh, that's another competitive situation in a world where you've got, you know, Japan coming and the U.S. coming and European automakers, and then you've got the Chinese. Let me, let me, let me ask you about Japan right now, because yeah. people are wondering about the economy there, the, the Japanese yen having fallen the way it has. How do you characterize things? I think the, the, the volatility on the Japanese yen is not so much due to the Japanese economy, but to the situation in China. We know very well that the yen is the kind of place where a lot of people put their money when there is something that they don't like taking place into the region. And now the yen strengthens when the situation in China is considered as being volatile or, or worrying. So I don't think it links to the Japanese economy. Now, on the Japanese economy, there is still a challenge ahead because the Central Bank of Japan has taken as an objective of 2% inflation rate. We're not at that level now, so everybody's expecting additional measures, additional, uh, you know, uh, initiatives in order to make this happen. And, you know, markets don't like uncertainty. They, they, they like to know exactly what's going to happen. So we are in a situation today where there is a lot of uncertainty around the economy of Japan. I'm not, I'm not pessimistic about it. I, I think at the right time, the decision will be made. We're moving out. Yeah. Oh. When you see oil prices as low as they are, Carlos, does that dictate behavior? And will people say, you know what, I think I am going to buy that SUV. No. I think I am going to buy that big car, whereas a year ago I may not have because it was just too expensive to fill up my tank. Yeah, look, uh, oil prices by definition are, are unpredictable. Nobody can predict, you know, where it's going to be in one week, one month, or one year from now. So if you base your strategy, particularly for a car maker, where we make investments for many years to come, we can't assume any price of oil. We have to take in consideration that the oil price can be low and it can be high. So what drives a lot of the technology coming today are two things. First is regulation, regulation on emission, regulation on safety, etc. And what we are expecting from the consumer. Not that he wants something, but what we think the consumer is going to be wanting a few years down the road. For example, we've been very influenced by what is taking place in the tech uh, side uh, of the market. That's why you're seeing now a lot of emphasis on autonomous drive, connected cars, low emission or zero emission cars, because we are being driven by these two important trends. Oil impacts us favorably when the price is down, unfavorably when the price is up, but it doesn't determine our strategy. Yeah, I think you make such an important point. I was talking with someone the other day, and she was said, she said to me, Maria, you can eat on the floor in my auto shop. Mm -hmm. Gone are the days that there's grease everywhere, and you know, I mean, because it's all technologically based. Now there are attacks on the industry from from places like Uber, yeah. you know, all these other, you know, even some of your competitors are saying, well, we're going to do ride sharing. How do you need to stay ahead of the pack? You were first. You were the first one out there with the electric car. Yeah. And so tell me the trends you see ahead and how you stay ahead. I think uh, uh, first on electric cars, it's obvious that all car makers are going to need zero emission car, whatever they are, electric car or fuel, cell, uh, fuel cells, which is based on hydrogen, uh, for a very simple reason. That means the, the restriction on emissions, particularly on CO2, are going to make it mandatory. That means you are going to have to sell more zero emission cars. That's number one. Second, you have the drive for autonomous drive and connected cars just because it's such an important trend with the consumer. And the consumer are very interested in having cars with more autonomous drive. Autonomous drive is not the car without the driver. There is a lot of confusion out there. Autonomous drive is mean I am empowering the driver to drive whenever he wants and not to drive whenever he wants in a very safe manner. And this is coming. I'm talking about, I, I think by 2020, you're going to see a lot of cars with massive autonomous drive features 
on the road. Yeah, you were the first person to, uh, to educate me about autonomous cars. Because the fact is, is when you buy a car, you want to be there. You want to drive the car. Exactly. But then maybe you have a long trip, you want to press a button, and then you're autonomous. Exactly. And or these are the kinds of cars that you're developing. Exactly. Or if you are in a traffic jam, there is no uh, driving pleasure in a traffic jam. These are the situations where we want to empower the driver to say, okay, I switch it on or switch it off in function yeah. of what I want. And if you marry this with the connected car, then when you're not driving, you're doing something else, yeah. which is productive or pleasant. Fantastic. Carlos, great to have you on the program. Thank you. Marie. Always wonderful to see you. Carlos Ghosn, CEO, Renault, Nissan.